Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Hi everybody and welcome back. This is Miss Ryle back again with another Shrine Time online story time. And today we're going to be reading The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse by Beatrix Potter. So let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a wood mouse, and her name was Mrs. Tittlemouse. She lived under a hedge. Such a funny house. There were yards and yards of sandy passages leading to storerooms and nut cellars and seed cellars all amongst the roots of the hedge. So she lived underground or on top of the ground? She lived underground. There was a kitchen, that's where you cook food, a parlor, where you have guests, a pantry, that's where you keep all your food, a larder. Also, there was Miss Tittlemouse's bedroom where she slept in a little box bed. So if she slept in a little box bed, is Miss Tittlemouse small or big? She's small. Mrs. Tittlemouse was a most terribly tidy, particular little mouse, always sweeping and dusting the soft, sandy floors. Sometimes a beetle lost its way in the passages. Shoo, shoo, little dirty feet, said Mrs. Tittlemouse, clattering her dustpan. So she did not like unexpected visitors because she wanted to keep her house very clean. And one day, a little old woman ran up and down in a red spotty cloak. Your house is on fire, Mother Ladybird! Fly away home to your children! That's what Miss Tittlemouse told her, so that she wouldn't get her house dirty. Another day, a big fat spider came into the shelter from the rain. Beg pardon, is this not Miss Muffet's? Go away, you bold bad spider! leaving ends of cobweb all over my nice, clean house. She bundled the spider out at a window. He let himself down the hedge with a long, thin bit of string. Mrs. Tittlemouse went on her way to a distant storeroom to fetch cherry stones and thistle-down seed for dinner. All along the passage, she sniffed and looked at the floor. I smell a smell of honey. Is it the cowslips outside in the hedge? I'm sure I can see the mark of a little dirty feet. Suddenly, round a corner, she met Babbity Bumble, a little bumblebee. Zzz, bzz, bzz, said the bumblebee. Miss Tittlemouse looked at her severely. She wished she had a broom. Good day, Babbity Bumble. I should be glad to buy some beeswax, but what are you doing down here? Why do you always come in at the window and say ziz, bzz, buzz? Mrs. Tittlemouse began to get cross, which means she was mad at Babbity Bumble. Zzz, whizz, whizz, replied Babbity Bumble in a peevish squeak. She sidled down a passage and disappeared into a storeroom which had been used for acorns. Mrs. Tittlemouse had eaten the acorns before Christmas. And the storeroom ought to have been empty, but it was full of untidy dry moss. And what do we know about Miss Tittlemouse? She does not like things to be untidy. Mrs. Tittlemouse began to pull out the moss. Three or four other bees put their heads out and buzzed fiercely. I am not in the habit of letting lodgings. This is an intrusion, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. I will have them turned out. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I wonder who would help me. Buzz, whizz, whizz. I will not have Mr. Jackson. He never wipes his feet. So these bumblebees are living in Mrs. Tittlemouse's house. They didn't ask to live there. So she's mad. She wants to kick them out. 
Mrs. Tillmouse decided to leave the bees till after dinner. When she got back to the parlor, she heard someone coughing in a fat voice. <coughs> and there sat Mr. Jackson himself. <gasps> she did not want Mr. Jackson in his house because he always has, what did she say? Dirty feet. He never wipes his feet. He was sitting all over a small rocking chair, twiddling his thumbs and smiling with his feet on the fender. He lived in a drain below the hedge in a very dirty, wet ditch. So he's probably not very clean. How do you do, Mr. Jackson? Dearie me, you have got very wet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. I'll sit a while and dry myself, said Mr. Jackson. He sat and smiled, and the water dripped off his coattails. Mrs. Tittlemouse went round with a mop cleaning up after him. He sat such a while that he had to be asked if he would take some dinner. First she offered him cherry stones. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. No teeth, no teeth, no teeth, said Mr. Jackson, and he opened his mouth unnecessarily wide. He certainly had not a tooth in his head. Then she offered him thistledown seed. Tiddly widdly widdly, puff puff puff, said Mr. Jackson. He blew the thistle down all over the room. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Tittlemouse. Now, what I really, really should like would be a little dish of honey. Where'd the honey come from? Bees? Maybe Babbity Bumble will be able to help out. I'm afraid I have not got any, Mr. Jackson, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. Tiddly widdly widdly, Mrs. Tittlemouse, said the smiling Mr. Jackson. I can smell it. That is why I came to call. Mr. Jackson rose ponderously from the table and began to look into the cupboards. Mrs. Tittlemouse followed him with a dishcloth to wipe his large wet footmarks off the parlor floor. So he's walking around and she's following him with a dishcloth, cleaning up. When he had convinced himself that there was no honey in the cupboards, he began to walk down the passage. Indeed, indeed, you will stick fast, Mr. Jackson. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, Mrs. Tittlemouse. First he squeezed into the pantry. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, no honey, no honey, Mrs. Tittlemouse. There were three creepy, crawly people hiding in the plate rack. Two of them got away, but the littlest one got caught by Mrs. Tittlemouse. Then she squeezed into the larder. Miss Butterfly was tasting the sugar, but she flew away out the window. Tiddly, widdly, widdly, Miss Tittlemouse, you seem to have plenty of visitors. And without any invitation, said Mrs. Tittlemouse. They went along the sandy passage. Tiddly, willy, buzz, whiz, whiz. He met Babbity round a corner and snapped her up and put her down again. I do not like bumblebees. They are all over bristles, said Mr. Jackson, wiping his mouth with his coat sleeve. Get out, you nasty old toad! shrieked Babbity Bumble. I shall go distracted, scolded Mrs. Tittlemouse. She shut herself up in a nut cellar while Mr. Jackson pulled out the bee's nest. He seemed to have no objection to stings. When Mrs. Tittlemouse ventured to come out, everybody had gone away. The untidiness was something dreadful. Never did I see such a mess. Smears of honey, a moss, and thistle down and marks of big and little dirty feet all over my nice, clean house. This is probably the worst day of Mrs. Tittlemouse's life. She loves to be clean and her entire house is a mess. Poor Mrs. Tittlemouse. She gathered up the moss and the remains of the beeswax and then she went out and fetched some twigs to partly close up the front door. I will make it too small. For Mr. Jackson. She doesn't want anybody coming to her house. 
she fetched soft soap and flannel and a new scrubbing brush from the storeroom. But she was too tired to do any more. First, she fell asleep in, the, in her chair, and then she went to bed. Will it ever be tidy again? said poor Mrs. Tittlemouse. Next morning, she got up very early and began a spring cleaning which lasted a fortnight, which is a very long time. She swept and scrubbed and dusted, and she rubbed up the furniture with beeswax and polished her little tin spoons. She's probably getting very happy that her house is getting clean. When it was all beautifully neat and clean, she gave a party to five other little mice without Mr. Jackson. He smelt the party and came up to the bank, but he could not squeeze in at the door. So they handed him out acorn cupfuls of honeydew through the window, and he was not at all offended. He sat outside in the sun and said, Tiddly, whittly, whittly, your very good health, Mrs. Tittlemouse. The end. I liked that story, and I hope you did too. Now it's time to say goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends, goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye.